Good morning to the Way Christian Sitter family. It is so great to be with you all in this capacity as a preacher. And just want to give a special thank you to the pastoral team for this invitation. A um, special shout out to Pastor Mike, Lady Sharice, Pastor Tanisha, Pastor Lauren, and Minister Mike. Just want to send my love and appreciation to you all for your leadership and for the work that you do around the Bay Area community and in the world and in the life of everyone who comes into contact with you all. And to the Greater Way Christian Center family, just thank you so much for your love and support. Tyler and I so, so much love you and we look forward to worshiping with you all again in person whenever it is safe to do so. So I'm really excited to be starting this Advent series with you. For those of you all who don't know, like Advent season is this special time where we prepare sermons and songs and, and have decorations where we anticipate the coming of Jesus. It is a time where we remember when God placed God's self in the womb of an unwed teenage girl named Mary. It is a special time where we remember that God dwelt among us in the body of a dark-skinned Palestinian Jew named Jesus. This is a, a special time where we get to celebrate and I'm so excited to be starting this series with the story of Hagar and the hope that Hagar's story brings. Now, traditionally, uh, lectionaries centers around the stories of, of men. And for those of you all who do not know what the lectionary is, it's this special uh, calendar and platform where it provides scriptural readings for the church at large to, to guide us in different seasons of the church to journey with Jesus and to journey with the disciple, disciples in their walk with God. And I am so glad to be preaching from Dr. Will Gaffney's A Women's Lectionary for the Whole Church. Uh, something that I love about this book is that Dr. Will Gaffney acknowledges not only the way that God shows up, but shows us that who God shows up to matters as well that Hagar's story matters in the story of Jesus coming. So as we engage in this text for today, just something to keep in mind is that when we hear angel of God or, or messenger of God in the text, or really anywhere within uh, the Hebrew Bible, it is always revealed that this messenger or this angel is actually God in human form and the person who encounters God uh, usually walks away with something revelatory. So here is the story of God showing up in person to an Egyptian slave girl named Hagar. I'll be coming from Genesis 16, 7 through 13. And it reads, now the messenger of the all-seeing God found Hagar by a spring of water in the wilderness, the spring on the way to Shur. And the messenger said, Hagar, slave girl of Sarai, from where have you come and where are you going? And she said, from my mistress Sarai and my fling. The messenger of the inscrutable God said to her, return to your mistress and subject yourself to her. The messenger of the wellspring of life said to Hagar, greatly will I multiply your seed so they cannot be counted for multitude. Then the messenger of the fount of life said to her, look, you are pregnant and shall give birth to a son. And you shall call him Ishmael, meaning God hears. 
for the faithful one has heard of your abuse. He shall be a wild ass of a man with his hand against everyone and everyone's hand against him. And he shall live in the sight of all his kin. Verse 13. So Hagar named the living God who spoke to her. You are El Roy. For she said, have I really seen God and remain alive after seeing God? May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of God's word. And let's not be just hearers of the word, but doers of the word. So the title of the sermon is Hope from Hagar's Story. Hope from Hagar's Story. One of the things that I've loved about the way is that we are no stranger to centering Hagar's story and the stories of black women and girls. As we journey through Hagar's story and talk about the hope from it, uh, just keeping in mind, yes, we have engaged with this story before, but I also still want to offer a content warning for sexual assault and violence. If you need to step away from this sermon, definitely feel free to do so. And just know that the good news of Hagar's story is that she knows, she shows us that there is an all-seeing God. And because we follow an all-seeing God, God wants you to know you intimately. And know that the Way Christian Center is well-resourced so that you can experience the feeling of, of being seen and experience deeply the feeling of being heard tangibly through spaces like therapy and life group. So Hagar's story is, is special because in stories like Moses, we know that no human can withstand God's presence and live. Even when Moses only sees God's heel, Moses' appearance still changes. So it is significant and noteworthy that a black Egyptian slave girl meets God in the wilderness and receives a promise. A promise of a good quality of life for her, her baby, and their future generations. She doesn't receive this promise from wrestling with God like Jacob. She doesn't have to go up a mountain like Moses. Hagar meets God face to face and God asks her out of concern for her, out of love for her, out of longing to deeply know her, God asks from where have you come and where are you going? We have made it to this Advent season. We, we've made it to the last month of this calendar year. For Christians, this is the season where we reflect on the waiting of Jesus coming, the hope of Jesus coming. For Advent, in, in many households, there is the ritual of lighting a candle each week representing hope, love, joy, and peace. Advent is the time to re-engage with the hope that God brings, knowing that she understands and perceives what is happening to their children. This is the time to be honest with God, like the psalmist in Psalm 71, who asks for God to lift them out of their uncomfortable and oppressive situation that they are in. They're asking God to lift them from their pain, their grief, frustration. This is the time where we should take some time to reflect and express all of those emotions that we may have allowed to be pent up inside of us so that we can survive this year. I want to acknowledge that there are times where we may have felt like Hagar, that maybe we've been stood up by God. So like Hagar, maybe you have had to uh, deliver yourself 
from the evils that you have been experiencing this year. Maybe you have felt like you are all alone and had to dress your own wounds. You see, Hagar is with this rich family that travels from land to land and she is forced to be sexually assaulted by Abram. She is physically assaulted by Sarai. And after that, she liberates herself to the wilderness and that is where she meets God. God wants to know what is happening. God shows up to listen. Oftentimes, God is depicted as being commanding and, and, and instructive. But as God meets this black girl, the first thing God does is to check in on her. To hear Hagar's story. The story of where she's been and where she is going and I believe that God wants us, wants to check in on us. Even now, God is asking the question, where have you been? Where are you going? This question is salient for me as I am in the thick of transitions. I'll be transitioning from fiance to husband within this next year. I'll be transitioning from being a seminarian to receiving my Masters of Divinity. I even think about the, the transition that I recently experienced of moving from New York back to L.A. and, and trying to find housing. The transition of, of caring for my mental and physical health right now by starting therapy and working out again. All of these transitions mark where I've been and also mark where I'm going. And this is why I am thankful for the work of Dolores Williams in her book, Sisters in the Wilderness. It is a groundbreaking womanist theological work um, that talks about the, uh, the wilderness experience that all black and marginalized uh, communities have in common and how we can find common ground when we center the stories of black girls and women. As I reflect on God's question and as I keep this in mind, I'm reminded of where I've been. I'm a reminded that I have been in a place where I have ignored being complicit in the oppression of black women, of people experiencing homelessness, of queer and trans folks, of disabled people. This is where I've been. And where I'm going is where Dolores Williams calls everyone into acknowledging and perceiving the oppression endured by where she says, she says, uh, the oppressed of the oppressed. She calls us to not only put the stories of those who are oppressed at the center, but to also think about where we have been. How are we complicit in the oppression of others? And I think this is what Hagar's story is also calling from us. Many of us might have experienced these uh, these overt discriminatory acts from people um, around us. This is a time where we can sit and remember that God sees and knows our stories. God wants to know us deeply. And because we serve a God that wants to know us deeply, we should be moved and, and transformed into being just like God and seeing others and seeing the oppressed of the oppressed and seeing those who are experiencing homelessness and, and seeing those who are experiencing oppression and, and, um, and really um, enriching our lives with the, the saying of Saul Bona, I see you. This is the hope of Hagar's story, that our stories can be acknowledged 
and that we receive power to acknowledge the stories of others. So what else does this story do for us in this season of, of Advent? It helps us to see that we place our hope in the all-seeing God who truly wants to hear your story. So where have you come and where are you going? For many, this may have been a season of deconstructing old beliefs and becoming more aware of life-giving theological doctrines. 2020 to 2021, it seems like it's been a blended year, hasn't it? It has been filled with grief of our loved ones no longer here, anger at the misinformation we've, we've experienced and heard, the frustration of being around people who lack empathy. Thinking about even your own transitions you might have experienced in housings, in relationships, in employment, school, and more. In this text, Sarai relinquishes her responsibility to care for the well-being of Hagar when she abuses her. But God steps in to show that God cares for Hagar's survival and well-being. The God of Hagar is the God that we can place our hope in. God can handle our trauma and frustrations. We are not too much. Remember, you are not too much for God. And it is through this interaction of, of God and Hagar that we can glean God's invitation to you, to us, to take this time after church, take the time during this week to engage in this question. From where have you come and where are you going? Through engaging with the story of Hagar, we can know that we place our hope in the faithful one, the one who gives us agency for our future steps. So in this space in between where, where we've come from and where we are going, God wants to provide a way to where we are going. God wants to give us agency in where we are going. Hagar did not have any agency in how she lived. She then meets God who tells her, that her circumstance is seen and is heard. And for her to survive along with her child, she must go back. In this biblical time, this is the only agency that she has. A choice to stay liberated in the wilderness, the unknown place, or to survive and provide a healthy space for herself and for her baby that is yet to be born, to receive the necessary resources to survive. The hope from Hagar is not to go back to what has oppressed us, but to discover what gives us agency in our own journey to where we are going. What is God, what agency is God wanting to give us in our journey of where we are going. I think about my own agency in, in going to therapy and, and engaging physically with, with exercise, working out, engaging my mental and, and physical well-being. What is the agency that God wants to give to you? As a matter of fact, the, the question that comes to mind is, what is the next faithful step that God is showing you? What is your next faithful step in your journey to where you are going? And lastly, we place our hope in the fount of life who wants to ensure our well-being. So God wants us to find hope in where we are going. 
God wants us to find hope in where we are going. When the all-seeing God asks Hagar from where she's come and where she's going, she only shares about where she has come. She shares about her oppression, her trauma, her abuse. And I can only imagine how hard it must have been to even perceive where she might go from there. So in addition to God providing her agency to provide a good quality of life for herself and unborn child, the fount of life, the wellspring of life, God gives Hagar a promise. A promise so big that it mimics the promise given to Abraham that has been passed down from generation to generation throughout the Hebrew Bible. And Dolores Williams has this to say about Hagar's promise. The promise assures survival and the birth announcement forecasts the strategy that will be necessary for survival and for obtaining a quality of life. This is a blessing suggesting that Ishmael will be free and a warrior. He will be able to help create and protect the quality of life he and his mother Hagar will later develop in the desert. The scripture reveals that Ishmael's name means God hears. Hagar is not only shown that God hears and God sees her, but that God also gives her a reminder to know that God hears her. Always, God wants to give us hope in remembering that they want to hear us. That this hope will stay with us, will stick with us throughout our journey. That God can handle our questions. That God can handle our frustrations. As we begin the season of Advent, may you experience the God of this black girl. A God who chooses to see you. A God who chooses to hear you. To give you space to engage in the question, from where have you come and where are you going? That God wants to help you discover your next faithful steps in your process. That God wants to imagine with you a future that is beyond what you can dream or think of at this moment. And I'm shining this flame now. I'm shining it as a prayer. May the God who sees light your path. May your hope ignite in whatever space you find yourself in, in your waiting, longing. May the hope of God never burn out in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>